Well, here's an example uh, that uh, an exercise that I like to assign in one of my R programming courses that I teach online. And it's a, it's a fun exercise. It requires uh, that you know something about creating functions, which is relatively easy in R, but it also requires that you understand the fundamental basis of uh, these data structures, of certain data structures in R. And what the assignment is, you're to create a function that will automatically generate four different types of data structures in R, a vector, a matrix, a data frame, and a list. Now, of course, there are functions already in R that will do this for you, but that's not the purpose of this exercise. The purpose is to make you think about it and uh, demonstrate your own programming skill as well as your knowledge of these structures. Uh, let's start with um, vector maker. And what I like to tell my students, the advice I give them is don't try to sit down and do all of this at once. Uh, furthermore, uh, uh, develop them, develop these functions in order because you'll find that if you, once you create the vector maker function, you can use that. You can call that in your, in some of your other functions, particularly in the data frame function and the list maker function. So you can build on each other. You can create the simpler functions and then call them to create the more complex structures. Well, uh, so let's do this. Let's look at the vector maker first. And there were some requirements that I put on this. The, uh, the requirement for the vector maker was that it should generate a vector when it's called. And the user, the person who calls it, does not have to specify any arguments. Um, there is one optional argument, which is the length of the vector. They may uh, enter an argument, and we'll look at that uh, value for the length. Otherwise, if they don't call vector maker, the name of the function uh, that I gave it, with a value, an argument for the length of it, it should randomly generate and return one of each of the following vectors. Now, a vector must be all of the same type. A vector is a, a, it's a column, actually, of elements in R that are all of the same primitive data type or mode as it's normally called. Um, and so when this uh, function is called, it should generate automatically, randomly, either a numeric vector of 5 to 10 elements between the values of 1 and 100, or a character vector with, again, a random collection of 5 to 10 lowercase letters of the alphabet, or a logical vector, that is a vector of values true and false, that, again, should be a random collection and order of 5 to 10 true or false elements. And again, I, I advise my participants in my online courses at the Georgia R School to create, to take these assignments on piece at a time. That is, the way to do it is to, first of all, just get the function to output a numeric vector. And once you get that working, then get the function to output a character vector. And then after that works, get the function to output a logical vector. Uh, get something working, something simple, error-free, and then try to improve it and make it more complex. So uh, how do we do this? Well, first of all, I, I mentioned that there is a function in R, of course. There are several of them that will create vectors. Let's look at the vector function, and you can call up help in R uh, by saying question mark vector. This first statement just clears out the workspace, and you may or may not be familiar with R Studio. That's what I'm using to run R. R Studio is an open source program. You can obtain a copy at rstudio.org. Here's R running the consoles running down here. Uh, RM, this means remove a list, clear out all of the objects in your workspace. And I don't have any, but still, it's a good idea if you're writing programs to execute this statement first, uh, just so you don't have any conflicts with variables and so forth. Now, let's, uh, let's take a look at the vector function, the R native vector function, and we can do that by saying question mark vector, and it pops up over here in this help, in this, uh, help screen. Note, um, there are 
three, as typical with all of the data structures, you have is, is vector, as vector, and vector. Um, vector is the, what I will call perhaps incorrectly, a constructor function. It's actually not a constructor. A constructor is what you use to create new instances of a class. It creates a vector in R. And it has just two arguments, uh, the mode, which, and again, it's um, optional. Whenever you see, here's the definition of vector. Whenever you see the formal definition of a function in R that specifies default values for the arguments. So the first argument is named mode, and it has a default value of logical. So if someone calls vector and does not specify a value for mode, it will create a logical vector by default. It also, the R native function, uh, they can specify the length. Again, if they don't, it returns a vector that's empty. So this is the R native function. Now my function has just one optional argument and it's to be the length. And unlike the R native where it returns uh, a vector with of zero length, here, let's take a look. If I execute that in R, this is what we get. So I don't call any arguments. We get a logical vector that's empty, that doesn't have any elements, but there is a vector. Okay, mine is supposed to, or yours, the one you create, is supposed to return a vector between randomly between five and 10 elements. Well, how do you do that? Well, a very useful function for this is the sample function. And sample, you can see, here's my definition of a vector maker. It's really pretty, pretty simple, pretty com compact. And that's what you want, of course. Um, so whenever you see the function keyword, you know that someone is defining a function. And I'm naming this vector maker. Here is the, my formal definition of the arguments. It only has one x, and I use the sample function to create the default value of x, which in this case will be, when you do this, uh, when a sample, the first argument of sample is the set, the, the numeric set, the data set to sample from, and the second argument is the length of the sample uh, to to extract from that data set. So what this says is uh, randomly pick a number in the set 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's going to return a number. It's going to be either 5, 6, 7, or 8, 9, or 10, which will end up being the length of the vectors we'll see down here. So if I just execute this part, here it will show you what the sample does, what this part of it does, and what it does. It, whoops, it got that extra parentheses. I didn't want to do that. What it what it does is it returns every time I execute it, it will return a different single number between between five and ten. That's what the sample. That's what that. Uh, uh, this that's what sample does. Okay, so. Uh, what do I do in this function? So here's the body of the function. Starts here, ends here. The, what happens in the body of the function is we create a local variable, vec, and it is defined as a list structure, and it has three elements. The first element, again, I'm reusing sample, it draws a random sample from the set of 1 to 100 of this many, whatever x turns out to be. So if x is 5, it draws 5 randomly, selects 5 random numbers without replacement. That's important from this set. So that's the first vector. The second vector will be uh, letters. The, the letters, this is an object in R. Look, if I execute that, letters is an object. Lowercase letters is a reserved object in R that uh, contains the 26 lowercase letters of the alphabet. So I'm sampling from the alphabet, again, 5. That's going to be my second vector. Then the third vector that gets created and put in a list and stored in this local variable is going to be a random sample. I create here a, 
a random sample. I create this isn't random actually. I create 25 trues and 25 falses as the set, but sample randomly chooses this many of them. So it'll even though this is an ordered, it's ordered. The trues are first, are first, and then the falses are uh, the falses are second. See, when I apply sample to it, it'll just randomly grab, without replacement, X number of them. So what will be returned from this will be a list that has three vectors as the three elements, the three components of the list. And then, here's the last statement in the body. This is what gets returned. R, uh, you can use a return statement in R if you want, but you don't have to. What happens in, a, in the body of a function is just simply the very last statement that executes is what gets returned. So we don't want a list to be returned. The requirement was to return uh, one vector that is one of these three types, either numeric, five long from one to 100, uh, either letters, five long, or as many X as there are X, and then trues and falses. Well, how do you get it to only return one of these? Well, we can reuse sample again. So we sample, randomly sample, one of these three components in the list, vector one, vector two, vector three. We're using the subscripts to reference those individual components in this list, and that's what get returned. That's what gets returned. So let's see this in operation. Okay, so you, you have to load it up first, of course. So here's my workspace over here. There's nothing in it. So you can load it just by highlighting it like this and hitting run. So now Vector Maker is in memory. And a nice thing about our studio note, I can just click on that, and uh, there's our function. And so you can look at it, and you can actually edit it and save it. Let's call it. Okay, so will it work? Okay, so here we call it with uh, no argument, and it returns a vector, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements, and they're random, uh, random sampling uh, from uh, uh, one to one hundred. Note every time I call it, let's call it a couple of times. Every time I call it. It is, and there we go, there's the true false. It's each time it's going to return a vector that's from five to 10 long, and it's going to be either numeric, even though we're getting a lot of numerics now, it's going to be randomly, it's going to be numeric, true false, or letters. There's the letters. If you did it a thousand times, you'd have a pretty equal number of each. If you do it a few times, so uh, it seems to be working. Well, what about if they, if the user wants to specify? Uh, the length, if they want to pass in a value for the length, like 5. Let's see if that works. So here, when we call it with 5, x, instead of x taking on a random number in, the, in each call of the function, x will always be 5. So uh, does it work? Sure, it does. It always returns a vector that's 5 long, and it's going to be one of those three types. There's a lot of true-falses. There's the letters. The letters are... Uh, shy today. They don't want to come out. So we have vector maker working. Let's go on to the next data structure, a matrix, and let's create a function that will randomly generate a matrix. We'll do, we'll do that in the next video.